This meeting is being recorded. Hi, this is Anne with a short video about the um, creating a new circle object with using rectangle as a model. I get a lot of requests to give you more visual um, examples, and so I'm going to give this a try. Um, the exercise that we are working on is the one where we have a rectangle object and a setup where it can draw on a canvas and your mission is to create a circle object that can draw on the same canvas. So I'm going to take a look at the code in my Cloud9 environment. Um, here's my target image which I'm going to just go ahead and close because we don't need that right away. And down here I have a draw shapes folder with an HTML file that currently um, pulls in the rectangle class and the code that can actually draw on the canvas. So here's my rectangle class and in the slides I point out that this is a shape and that all of our shape objects are going to have very similar methods. Um, identical for some of them, uh, for some, the arguments in the methods may change. So one of the, um, one of the things to do is avoid panic at all cost. And uh, one of the ways I avoid panic is I very rarely create code from scratch. I know that some of you believe, um, and, and I endorse this if it works for you, that typing in code, complete code, really reinforces your learning. But if that works for you, I think you should spend more time with the Myers book which is set up to help you do that. And that when you are doing these exercises um, of converting from one class to another, you should try the other mode of thinking, which is try to have the big picture and the end in mind, rather than get too tied up in exactly which line looks like which. Because one of the things I would point out is that we already know how to draw circles. And we have in the slides the fact that um, we've been told that each of the shapes should have a series of methods like this rectangle method. So the first thing I would do if I was going to implement this, and indeed when I did my solution, how I did implement it, is I would come over here and make a duplicate file of rec.js and call it circle.js. There, that's something accomplished. And I'd come down here and I'd duplicate this line and say, let's pull in circle.js as well as rec.js. Note that both of these files have to be in the HTML above draw shapes, because draw shapes needs to have those classes, those objects loaded into memory before it can use them. And I apologize for sometimes calling these objects classes. I, I've been a class-based object person for a lot longer than I've been a JavaScript object person. So let's take a look at draw shapes. And let's just assume that my circle um, code is working. And um, I mean, one of the nice things I like to do is assume code is working and then kind of move it that direction. So we have two rectangles here. Let's just copy this and create a circle. We want to draw a circle on here. And um, let's just let it have all default options. So we're going to call this C1 and this C2, C1. So basically, I'm, I'm assuming that circle's going to work and that I'm going to be able to draw it. And I actually know that that's not true, but um, it's useful sometimes to just sort of see what happens. So I'm going to run this file. Oh, but I don't run that file. I run this file that calls it. And I come here and I open that page. And you'll note, I'm not getting a circle. I'm still getting the two rectangles that I had originally. If I look in my console log, 
I find that circle is not defined, which certainly makes sense because I haven't gone into my new circle class and done anything yet. But it's kind of nice when you're about to start coding and, and it's new, everything's new, to actually sort of get your environment set up so that your environment can help you when you're ready to actually start the coding. So let's do this. Let's go into our brand new shiny circle object code and note that there's at least one thing wrong with it right away. And that is, let me get some of these tabs closed. Okay. Um, the one thing wrong with this, obviously, is that this is still saying rect instead of circle. So um, I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is rename it. Okay. We know that the name of this object constructor should be circle. And um, I want it to draw a circle, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I'm going to control S to save that file. I'm going to come back here, and I'm certainly hoping this time I get three shapes on the canvas. Mm -hmm. Oh, I closed the tab. All right. Who hasn't done this to themselves in C9, right? Okay, still not getting three shapes. So the question would be, why is that? We get this warning because C9 doesn't know about the files that the HTML is pulling in. And certainly I believe that, um, that circle is being pulled in from my HTML. And I believe that it should be running. And if I go over here and take a look, I don't know why it's not. Um, but I'm gonna keep making some progress here. So if I pull up, if I move rectangle to the other pane, one of the things I can do is, is just take a look at the two of these together. And I would certainly think that my circle object should be running. So let's just do a shift refresh. And Take a look here. Oh, right. <clears throat> you always need to set context. <clears throat> Can't draw on the canvas if it doesn't know where the canvas is. So let's do that. So the minimum amount of code you need to draw a circle is instantiate it with new, set the context so it knows where the canvas is, and draw it. And now I think that code should be working. I come over here to my view and I do a shift refresh. And note that I'm still not getting a circle, but my box up here is rectangles default green because, or in this case, right now, circles default green. So then the question becomes, if I have code that's working, um, how do I transform a rectangle into a circle object? And luckily enough, we already have some nice sample code here for drawing circles. So let's take a, a look at the difference between a circle, which a face is basically a circle. Okay, so circles don't have upper left and, and upper left X's and Y's, and they don't have width and height. What they do have is center X's and center Y's. So I'm basically just gonna say, hey, if I want a circle, instead of a rectangle, let's get my properties to the point where I think I can draw a circle. Okay, so circle we generally define in terms of its center, and then circles don't have a width and a height, they simply have a radius. Now, if I run this code right now, the draw function is going to fail because, um, because I don't have the things I need for this call. So there's no use even trying it. Let's go ahead and make this something pretty bright. 
And I could run this right now and see that it fails. But if you think about it, um, let's think about what would be right and what would we need to change. Set context. We've got a property for context. We need to be able to set it. Set color. We've got a property for color. We need to be able to set it. Set location. Oh, this needs to change. I'm getting a new X and Y, but they aren't upper lefts anymore. They are center X and center Y. So that would allow me to put the circle anywhere I want on the um, canvas. This is the function for set size that you would need to do for the other exercise. So I'm not showing you the solution for that. But we know that, circle, that circles don't have widths and heights, they have radius. So let's just assume that what we're going to bring in here is a new radius. And I will leave it as an exercise to you on how to um, set that. But what I need in here is I need code that's going to draw a circle instead of a rectangle. And luckily, said code exists right here. So um, just steal from yourself. If, if you have some code that draws a circle, and you need code that draws a circle, don't make this any harder than it has to be. Grab that code. And actually, I'm going to put it down here because I think we need to see the difference. This code is inside a function that's not in an object. The code on the left, we have to have um, we have to have code that is inside the object, which means that it always needs to be using this to let the JavaScript engine know which object's memory we are changing. So let's just go down these. The draw function already has a stroke style and a fill style, so I don't have to add those. It's got a begin path, so that's good. Okay. Um, here's a line that's real different between the circle drawing code and the um, in the, the rectangle drawing code. So I'm going to move that up there and I can look at them. And then down here, I've got a stroke and a fill, but I have a fill and a stroke already in my code. So I'm just going to assume that those are going to work. And what I see is that I need to not be drawing a rectangle in my context. I need to be drawing an arc. So let's change that. Um, actually, and then, okay, what does an arc take? It takes the center left, the center X, the center Y, the radius, and then we got these magic values over here, which tells the circle drawing code where to start and how far around the circle to go. And I'm just going to grab those and replace that, get rid of my extra comma, and then to get rid of this messy line down here. And now I have a function called draw that looks very much like my old rectangle drawing function with one critical change, which is instead of drawing, um, calling the rect function in HTML um, JavaScript, it's calling the arc function with what I think are the right, um, the right parameters. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to come back over here to my page and shift refresh. And now I have the default orange circle appearing on my page. And at this point, besides adding the set size code that you need because we didn't have one to copy from uh, rectangle essentially what you need to do here is go into this page and begin to try to match the target so i think i can bring that up over here okay so you need to adjust your gold and purple uh, 
rectangles to be approximately the right size. You need a red circle that's smaller and a blue circle that looks to me like it's in the middle of the canvas. So for example, let's just, let's just grab this. This is a set location that puts something in the middle of the canvas. And if I make C1 a circle that goes into the middle of the canvas, and I draw it, I save that, I come over here, I shift refresh, voila. Now, there's an important difference between my target picture and my current picture, and that's primarily that the rectangle that shares an upper left with the center of the circle needs to be drawn after the circle code, because order matters. Shift refresh. And now really, if I look at the target photo, the only thing that's really wrong is I have to change the color of my circle. And possibly I have to decide if that's really a gold or a yellow. But I'm already pretty close. So again, I think sometimes you need to really be working on your fingers and, and making sure that you can type in code that's syntactically correct. And sometimes what you need to do is step back and have, have the big picture that we are adding shapes and that the slides point out that the methods, which you can see in this outline tab over here, the methods for a circle should be the same as the methods for a rectangle. The arguments are different. The parameters to those calls are different because of the underlying shape differences. But the overall outline of these shape objects should be about the same. I hope that helps.